All right, 13.5, and you might be wondering, why the hell are you still on 13.4? Well, it's because this first problem I'm going to do in 13.5 is a continuation from this problem we just did in 13.4. And so uh, what, what are we going to do now? Well, it's the exact same stuff as above. Um, you need a f Okay, so you're given the same curve, all right? So we're just going to mug this curve down here. So this is uh, actually, let me get the correct zoom. That's a good zoom. All right, 13.5.9. Now what we want to do is find the binormal vector, the unit binormal, and uh, the torsion or tau, okay? So now we want to find that, and R of t is still that guy up there, which was God knows what. Um, I, I don't remember, whatever, what the, what the curve is. Ugh. Okay, 3 sine, 3 cosine, 4 t. Okay, 3 sine three cosine 40 okay and the real reason why I'm continuing this is because we got to add the binormal well, to find the binormal you had to find the unit tangent and the unit normal and then you can find the binormal because the binormal is equal to the tangent cross the normal vector okay so I didn't want to reduce this problem from scratch because it would have taken a fuckload of time just to take all these derivatives so uh, we're just going to continue on from here so now okay b hat is equal to uh, the cross product, i, j, k, okay, so what's t hat? t hat is uh, that guy up there, right? So let's mu multiply the one-fifth in. So you got uh, three-fifths cosine t, negative three-fifths sine t, and you got four-fifths. And then n hat is right there. It's negative sine t, negative cosine t, zero, okay? Take the dot cross product. What is this? i times negative three-fifths sine t, Four fifths negative cosine t zero okay plus or not a plus but this needs to be a minus j times the determinant of okay three fifths cosine t four fifths negative sine t zero and then plus a k times uh, three fifths cosine t negative three fifths sine t negative sine t negative cosine t. Great. Okie dokes. And now, 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 now what? Okay, so now this is equal to, mm, mm, mm. this is zero, that's minus four fifths, or minus a negative four fifths cosine t. So that's a positive four fifths cosine t, right? That's positive, because we're minus a negative four fifths cosine t. And then what do I got? And then this guy is, minus, so this is, this determinant is minus a negative four-fifth sine t, so that's a positive four-fifth sine t, and then there's a negative sine out in front, so that becomes a minus four-fifth sine t. Yeah, gotta, gotta keep track of your minus signs and, and when they cancel each other. It's a pain in the ass. Um, and then lastly here, uh, what do I got? I got minus three-fifths cosine squared t, minus a three-fifths sine squared t, so that's a minus three-fifths cosine squared t plus sine squared t, right? So I just factor out a three-fifths, but then this part is just one, and so I only have three minus three-fifths as my last coordinate, okay? And so that's the binormal vector right there. Amazing, okay, so we found the binormal vector. What's next? Now we need to find the torsion, all right? So torsion tau is equal to this formula that I don't have on my screen right now that I'm going to pull up, do, 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 which is, <laughs> this is so stupid. Um, torsion is negative one over the magnitude of the velocity times the derivative of the binormal dt dotted with n hat. <laughs> Okay, so that means, well, we know what the magnitude of velocity is, right? That's uh, five, right? Yeah, we have that, right? It's right there. Um, so now we need to find db hat dt. So we just found the binormal, and we just got to take the derivative now. So this is negative four-fifths sine t, and then that is negative four-fifths cosine t, and then the last guy is zero. All right, I've got to dot this with n. So um, dot it with n. 
and n is equal to, what was it, negative cosine, negative cosine, negative sine t, negative cosine t, zero. All right, if we dot it and we add it, we get four-fifths sine t, sine squared t, plus four-fifths cosine squared t. And if I factor out four-fifths from both these guys, I get four-fifths times cosine squared plus sine squared here, but that's just one. So um, that part is going to be four-fifths. Okie dokes. And now what? Okay, and now uh, I need one over negative one over the magnitude of velocity, which is five. So torsion equals negative one-fifth times four-fifths. And I get 4 over 25. I forgot the negative sign. Well, that's going to be torsion. All right. So that's how you find the binaural vector and the torsion vector. Uh, there is one other thing way we can find torsion, which is uh, the following way. It's in your textbook, I believe. Um, let me see if I can find it. Torsion, torsion, torsion. Oops. That's not want it is ah so this formula for torsion it's right before example two in section 13.5 and it's uh tau is equal to x prime y prime z prime x double prime y double prime z double prime x triple prime y triple prime z triple prime divided by um the velocity cross acceleration, the magnitude of that squared. All right, and why is that? Well, okay, and what is x prime, y prime, z prime? Well, if you have a position vector r of t, right, you have some x component, right? You have a y component and you have a z component, okay? And so you just take this x and you take a derivative, take that y, right? You take this y, you take a derivative, you take this z, you take a derivative. So that's how you calculate it. Uh, you can do that too, but since we already found the binormal in this problem, might as well find the torsion using this formula. Um, but if you're just straight up asked to find the torsion, this way is probably the easier way to do it because then you don't have to take, well, you have to take many derivatives still, but it's not bullshit like this or you have to go all the way over to the derivative of the binormal. Yikes. Okay, so... That's that part for 13.5. There are two more videos coming in 13.5. One of them being um, this tangential and uh, normal components of acceleration. Oh, God. Um, and then 13.57. Uh, well, that's a problem I'm going to do. But uh, there's also these planes that these curves are tangent to or lie in. It's one or the other that the normal and the unit tangent lie in, I think. Who knows? Um, again, uh, the theory I'll cover in class, but two more vectors in 13.5, uh, two more problems in 13.5 that we got to do.